back in the day when I was 16, 17 years old, I was watching Ronnie Coleman videos and he was from Arlington, Texas. Okay. So my dream was to become a bodybuilder back in the day. Yeah. And to go to Texas, to drive a Hummer, you know, and eat barbecue all day long. <laughs> but it didn't work out that way. <laughs> so I want to ask you genuinely, how keen are you to dive into your story again today? Is it okay for you? Do you want to keep yeah. it shorter? Yeah, I can, yeah. I can make it, I can shorten it and get to the important parts that people probably really care about. I'm sure I start, exactly, everyone exactly. starts telling their story, a lot of people start zoning out anyway. I'm simply a YouTuber sharing my journey online as I document my, you could say self-improvement journey. I'm simply trying to become the, the best version of myself, which has led me to doing all kinds, all kinds of stuff. I, you can see like a punching bag in the back because when I was in Thailand traveling last year, I did like a Muay Thai fight, like a kickboxing fight after only mm. training for a few months. Nice. And that was like a challenge I did. I got into like a journey to read every religious book, not every single one, but the main one. So like the Book of Mormon, the, uh, we got the Bible. I'd already been studying the Bible. I read the Quran. I became a Buddhist monk for a week or not became a monk, but I studied with monks and lived with monks for one week, shaved my eyebrows, shaved my head in Thailand. <laughs> and yeah, that's, that's all, that's all really I'm doing in, in life is, you know, trying to become the best version of myself so I can protect and provide for the people that I love. And it's led me down, it's led me down this path right now of sharing my learnings, specifically focusing right now on pretty much comparing Islam to Christianity because I've grown up as a Christian and I knew religion during high school. So I'm 22. When I was like 16, 17, 18, I was a devout Christian and I, you know, I gave all in. Like I was, I was literally studying the Bible every single day because I thought if this is going to make people go to heaven or hell, if the, you know, you kind of have that realization, like if this is real, if religion is real and there's this afterlife, like nothing, does anything really matter besides this? Like this has to be number one. So I became, I went all in on it, like all in. You know, you could, you could say like OCD or just obsessed, like, you know, to the point where I'd be like, I'd be just breaking down crying. Like, how is no one else stressed about this? Am I the only one who's actually like <laughs> believing in this book? Like I understand <laughs> pastor, they're dedicating their life to this, but like, what is everyone else doing? You know, right. like, I kind of felt like, just like isolated. Like, why is this seem to be, why am I like the only one who's actually not the only one, but pretty much the only one who's like worried about this. So, but that, anyway, that was the stressful part about like kind of the fear that got me really enticed into religion, I guess. And, but that's the fear side of it. But for three years, when I was a devout Christian, I had this immense peace that no matter what happened in my life, like God, God was with me. And I knew I had found something like I had, you know, you could say like the Michelangelo painting. I knew I had touched something. Then I like just dove so far into it that I kind of got confused and just too obsessed with it that for, you know, the next three years, you could say I was still going to church, but questioning it. So I had this immense peace that I knew I had found something. And then for three years, I would even have conversations with my Christian friends. And he'd be like trying to convince me that like, I should basically come back to Christianity and be like, he'd be like, weren't you more peaceful when you were a Christian? I'd be like, I was like, I agree with you. I don't really believe it. I just don't really believe the whole thing anymore. I don't, I see so much emotions when I go to church. Like there's so much emotions everywhere. Um, fast forward to now, I read the Quran. Many things stuck out to me. It's the first time I'd ever touched a Quran was the day I read it on my YouTube channel. I read it in one sitting. I read it for 17 hours until I finished it. I was in Bangkok, Thailand, traveling at the time. Oh, no way, man. We should have met up. Yeah, I know, I know. That so is that where you're located? I know you're in Thailand. Is that where you are in Thailand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm based oh. in Bangkok. Yeah. Oh, okay. It was a life-changing trip. Me and my friend went backpacking in Thailand and Vietnam. We even went to Japan. That was like last Amazing. year. So that was when I read the Quran for the first time. And one thing that stuck out with me when I read it was like the, the chapter about how when Jesus gets to heaven, he's going to, I'm paraphrasing, he's going to tell God like, uh, is God's going to ask you, like, did you ever claim to be me? Essentially, He'd be like, I would, I would never claim such a thing. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that kind of makes sense. That is pretty bold to say, like, you are literally God in the flesh. And 
I never really understood like praying to Jesus or worshiping Jesus in church. So immense peace when I had when I was a Christian. I knew I had found something, but it, there was something missing. It seemed, at least in hindsight, now I can now it all makes sense. Um, wasn't anything. Now I'm like just continuing to research Islam and compare it to other religions. And there's a lot of peace in only praying to God and praying on your face. So yeah, my YouTube journey, my YouTube channel has been dedicated to this part of my life. I don't intend on being, you know, even if I were to become a Muslim, I don't intend on necessarily being like a, an only religious streamer and only talking about that. I want to go, I guess, be a Muslim and live, live my life. Not just uh, talking a bunch of words, but go do things about it. But yeah, right now I've been dedicating all of my videos pretty much to this journey. So yeah, it's been wonderful. It's brought me a lot of peace and I, I love learning. That's really what I'm just a student first. So I'm never afraid to learn anything new. You seem to be the same way. So yeah, that, that's, that's where I am. I got a long life ahead of me. So we'll see, we'll see where I go with this, but yeah. Inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. One thing that you just mentioned there is that the pastor was dedicated, but everybody around you wasn't, or at least that's how it seemed when it comes down to believing in the book. Yeah, that generalizing. That's something that I really yeah. noticed before we dive into my story, but I just want to say that if you look at Islam as a religion and you compare it to Christianity, I went to Mount Athos, which is an island full of orthodox monasteries. So I lived the Christian monk style as well, not only the Buddhist monk style. And what I noticed is that those were true Christians, right? Those people were really dedicated. But as a Christian, just the regular average Christian, how do you dedicate yourself? Because there is nothing that you really have to do outside of maybe going to church on Sunday. So there's not really that you have to do something specifically. With Islam, on the other hand, what I notice is that even as a common man, you basically have to live like a monk and integrate that into everyday life, which is even more challenging, right? Because, as I said, when I watched the Christian monks, they were praying three times per day, basically. And that seemed the like... Christian a monks. Different. Christian monks, yes. Orthodox Christian monks. And wow. this dedication to the religion, I only saw in Christianity with those monks. But with Muslims, you see it in everyday life. Right, because you have to pray five times per day. Yeah. So this is what really distinguishes those two religions, I believe. Because, as I said, there is nothing really mandatory for the Christian. Do you think that inherently makes it better? I wouldn't say that this is what makes it better per se, but I would say that it sets you firmly on a path. Let's compare it to martial arts. If you want to train Muay Thai, you said you trained how long? To, uh, two, two and a half months. Two and a half months. Yeah. How did you do? Uh, I, I, got de- I got destroyed. <laughs> yeah, okay, it was so great. what do you think? Thing that ever you would... <laughs> <laughs> what do you think if you would have trained two years every single day? Wouldn't that have been better? 100%. 100%, right? So yeah. when it comes down to physical training, you see what would work better to put in more dedication, to put in more work. And when it comes down to spiritual work, why would less be better? Well, I guess I, I, I agree with you. I'm just, <laughs> I guess I'm saying I, you could theoretically as a Christian pray. I mean, you could pray all day, every day. You could, absolutely. And well, if you look into the Bible, it says pray without seething, right? So yeah. you should technically pray. But I'm saying that this mandatory spiritual work that is ordained onto the Muslim is very unique. That's all that I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. It's very yeah. unique that you get this blueprint, essentially, of how to level up spiritually. In other religions, it's not mandatory, but it's a choice. And if you really want to go all the way, you would end up in a monastery as a Christian to do essentially the same work that a Muslim is doing on a daily basis anyways. That's how I see it. You no, know, I, I, I mean, I noticed the same thing with like studying Buddhism and going to the Buddhist temple. I was like, I love their philosophies. But then like after I left, and I was like, whoa. Like, that was so cool, but how do I repeat that? Like, I'm not at a temple anymore. <laughs> like, do I just yeah. meditate at random points during the day? So I get what you're saying. I feel I felt the same way. It's definitely like a discipline. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That kind of makes sense. That is pretty bold to say, like, you are literally God in the flesh. And I never really understood, like, praying to Jesus or worshiping Jesus in church. So immense peace when I had when I was a Christian. I knew I had found something, but it there was something missing, it seemed. At least in hindsight, now I can. Now it all makes sense. 
um, wasn't anything. Now I'm like just continuing to research Islam compared to other religions. And there's a lot of peace in only praying to God and praying on your face. So yeah, my YouTube journey, my YouTube channel has been dedicated to this part of my life. I don't intend on being, you know, even if I were to become a Muslim, I don't intend on necessarily being like a, an only religious streamer and only talking about that. I want to go, I guess, be a Muslim and live, live my life. Not just uh, talking a bunch of words, but go do things about it. But yeah, right now I've been dedicating all of my videos pretty much to this journey. So yeah, it's been wonderful. It's brought me a lot of peace and I, I love learning. That's really what I'm just a student first. So I'm never afraid to learn anything new. You seem to be the same way. So yeah, that, that's, that's where I am. I got a long life ahead of me. So we'll see, we'll see where I go with this, but yeah. Inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. Thank you very much for that. And as always, guys, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. <laughs>